So this is the Osprey Farpoint Trek 75. It is part of Osprey's travel series of backpacks. They're all called Farpoint for men and Fairview for women. That gets a little bit confusing because they make the Farpoint Trek and then they make the Fairview Trek. And in terms of the design and the features, they're exactly the same. It's just that one is for men and the other is for women. So if you're looking at the far point trek, the dimensions of the waist belt and the harness system and the color has been aimed at men and the shape of men's bodies. If you're looking at the fair view trek, it's the exact same bag in every single way, except that the volume is a little bit smaller and perhaps the dimensions of the waist belt and the harness have been altered a little bit. That's all there is. So, Farpoint Trek, Fairview Trek, same bag, one for men, one for women, and it is part of the Osprey travel series of uh, backpacks, which means it has hiking features and it has travel features. They tried to combine them into one bag, and uh, hopefully they were successful. I'm going to try it out on my trip to Myanmar and see what I think about it. The Trek series comes in four sizes. For women, there is the 50 liter and the 70 liter. For men, there is the 55 liter and the 75 liter. And this is the 75 liter for men, which is the largest one in the uh, series. In terms of colors, the Far Point Trek for men comes in black and this petrol blue. For women, the Fairview Trek, the 50 liter and 70 liter, it comes in charcoal gray and an amulet purple. I saw one of those in the shops and uh, I quite like the purple. That was a very uh, nice color. Though it does come in four different volumes, 50, 55, 70, and 75 liters, the frame is designed to be one size fits all. So it can be adjusted in multiple ways. I'll turn it around and show you the uh, harness system and give you an idea of what's going on here. So this is the harness. It is a full suspension uh, harness system with a web backing with a gap between the web and your back to allow for ventilation to uh, keep you dry as you're hiking. Not important if you're only going from the airport to your hotel, but if you're wearing it for a couple of hours or several hours on the trail, this kind of suspension system and harness can really be quite nice to have. And that's kind of why it's a hybrid hiking backpack. That's one of the features. And the harness system is attached here on the side and there are four different attachment points. It's very easy to just pop this out and then plug them into the attachment point and that lowers and raises the whole harness system depending on the height of your torso. There are instructions on the Osprey uh, website for how to measure your torso and then apply it to this. But, he based, but basically you simply put it in a new slot, try on the bag, see how it feels. If it doesn't feel right, you can pop it out and try another one of the uh, locations. So hopefully you can see this clearly. I want to show you how the adjustability works. This is the part that you pull out. Pull it out on the other side as well. And now you can reinsert it into one of these four points. So this is the highest one for perhaps the tallest person, and the lowest one for the shortest person, and then these two in the medium. And there's, on the website, that says it's four inches of adjustability, but I've measured this and it's closer to six inches of full adjustability, up or down. I've been using this one here. So you simply, as you can see, now that the harness is loose, the whole thing slides up and down goes up on these poles and then down again. I've been using number three, so you just pull it off, plug it in there, go to the other side, pull it to the side, and plug it in there, and now the harness. It's as easy as that for adjusting that part. And then here at the top, 
you also have two different sets of buckles for supporting the whole harness system. I don't quite understand the difference between the two, but you can attach the harness to these lower buckles, and then when you pull them tight, it only goes up to here, or you can remove this strap, put them through here, and then when you tighten it, the, the harness system will get raised much higher to here. So it has adjustability at uh, this level as well. So the whole harness system can raise up and down using this system, and then you can also adjust how it tightens with these uh, sets of buckles up here at the top. So that's what makes it a one-size-fits-all adjustable backpack. You know, is that a good or a bad thing for uh, consumers? You know, in one way it's a bad thing because instead of going to the store and buying the exact bag that fits you, you're paying for all these other extra sizes and features that you don't really need. I mean, if you could just buy the backpack that fit your body, you're finished. You don't need all this extra stuff because you would never have to adjust it. But another way to look at it is that with this adjustability, you can adjust it for your own body in many different ways. You might use the pack for a few days and find out that if you raise this or lower it a little bit or tighten this up, raise it or lower it, you know, you can adjust it in micro ways, you know, to fit your body. So that can be a good thing. Plus, what if you wanted to lend your backpack to a friend or someone in your family? You can lend it to anybody. I mean, if you had a bag that only fit your body, you could only lend it to people who were the same size as you. It wouldn't fit a shorter person. But with this adjustability, you know, if you're six foot tall, you can use this pack. I could lend it to someone who is only five feet tall. All they have to do is move the harness down to the lower position and it will uh, fit their body just as well. And perhaps in the future, if you wanted to sell the bag, you could sell it to many more people because anyone could buy this bag and it would fit them. If it was specifically a large size for you, you could only sell it to people who needed a large bag. So that's my thoughts about the adjustability. Um, I, I quite like it so far. I've been playing around with all the different settings and I'm slowly dialing it in to how it feels best on uh, my body. In terms of overall dimensions, I put together a little chart or cheat sheet for all the different bags that they make in the uh, travel series with all the weights and the dimensions and I put it together on a screen and I will stick it in right now. A quick note about the weights that you see listed for these packs. The Trek series, Farpoint Trek, Fairview Trek, they come bundled with what Osprey calls the Air Cover, which is another brand new product from Osprey. And the Air Cover is up here in a pocket at the top. You can see it has a, a little airplane tag there, so that shows where the Air Cover is. And this air cover is a bag that can cover the entire backpack and you can zip it closed and lock it. And it converts into a rain cover. So it's a rain cover combined with a protective duffel bag for when you check it in on airplanes and things like that. And as I said, it comes bundled with that. You cannot buy them separately when you buy the Trek, the Farpoint Trek or the Fairview Trek you get the air cover automatically. It is part of the backpack, even though it is removable. And when you look at the weights, the weight, the total weight includes the weight of the air cover. So when you look at the weight for this one, the Farpoint Trek 75 on the website, it says that it weighs 4.63 pounds. In fact, the weight of the pack itself is about four pounds, a little bit less than four pounds because you have to subtract the three quarters of a pound for the air cover. I mean, the air cover is separate. You don't even have to bring it with you if you don't want it. You know, maybe you're not going to be hiking in the rain 
and you don't even want to put it in a bag when you check it in for the airline and you want to save, you know, three quarters of a pound. So you can take the air cover out and now the pack weighs less than four pounds instead of the 4.75 pounds that it weighs with the air cover. So just to be clear, when you look at the weights online, those weights are a little bit deceiving. You should subtract about three quarters of a pound in order to get the actual weight of the backpack itself. And since I mentioned the air cover, that's a good time to talk about the accessories for this bag. And the first accessory I'm going to talk about is, of course, the air cover. So here is the air cover pouch at the top. You can see it says air cover here, has a little airplane signal. It's a zippered pocket and the air cover is tucked away inside there and then you can zip it closed and here is the full air cover from Osprey and the way this works pretty simple has a zipper opens up the whole bag you know like a suitcase like a duffel bag and your full backpack would just slide inside like so zip it closed and the zippers have a loop here so you can feed a lot a little luggage lock through there if you want has a little window here to put in your name and address a luggage tag has a handle at the top a handle on the side and now you are ready to check your backpack in at the airport and all of the straps are covered up everything is protected nothing's going to get dirty or get hooked on anything in the luggage uh, area of the airport and everything is protected from thieves in theory because this will be locked and nobody can open any of the little bags or compartments on your uh, backpack so that is the air cover which covers your entire backpack and it also functions as a rain cover for when you get hiking and to do that you simply take this back flap roll it up starting from the top and you see there's some velcro here and when you get down to the bottom there's a velcro strap you just attach it this tucks away on the inside and then you see there is a little loop here down at the bottom and this toggle goes through that loop to hold it in place on the bottom like that and now the straps are open you can wear it as a backpack and it has a rain cover it's not fitting that tightly now of course because I don't have anything inside the bag but that's the uh, the basic idea hooks on on the bottom right there and then just wraps all around it like a normal rain cover and to use it as a full bag for checking and yeah, that just unclips and you zip it up and now you're ready to check it in at the airport or throw it on top of a bus or a truck and it keeps everything neat and tidy. So as I said, this air cover comes with the Osprey Farpoint Trek and Fairview Trek. It's bundled with it. You cannot buy them individually. When you buy the backpack, you automatically get this with it. So it, technically you're paying for both and you're carrying the weight of both of them. Putting it away, of course, pretty simple. You just fold it up however works for you. Push the air out. And then you can stuff it back inside its handy air cover pocket at the top. And there it is, the air cover. 
for me, I don't think I would leave the air cover here permanently. A pocket like this at the very top, to me that's very valuable real estate in a backpack. And I wouldn't use this cover very often, so I would probably take it out of here and I would just stuff it in the bottom of the pack and leave it there for when I need it. And then I would use this pocket at the top for uh, other things, you know, keep things here, small items that I need access to all the time because uh, I like having little pockets that I can uh, access. So that's accessory number one, the air cover. The Farpoint and Fairview Trek bags have also been designed to work with the Osprey Daylight Day Packs. So you can clip a small day pack either to the back of this backpack or to the front. So you, for security reasons or just for reasons of convenience, you can have this backpack on your back and then you can have the small daylight pack, about 20 liters, 24 liters, and have it attached to the front, or you could have it attached to the back. So it was designed specifically for the daylight series of, of Osprey uh, knapsacks, but a lot of other Osprey bags can be used as well. So I have an older Osprey Nebula backpack or knapsack. It's, it's a little bit of a larger one, and I'll show you how it can uh, attach to this uh, system. So if you look at the harness of the uh, backpack, you see that there are two buckles here. And these are the buckles that the daylight attaches to. With my Nebula, I also have a couple of buckles that can work with that. So it's as easy as taking this, clipping it into there, other side, clips into there, and now your bag is hanging from the harness on your chest as you're walking along. And down at the bottom, there are buckles here, and these buckles fit into loops on the uh, base of the backpack, so you can hold it a bit tighter um, if you want to do that. So it's a very simple, very fast way of attaching that to the uh, front there for security and convenience. This is a bit of a larger bag, the uh, daylight knapsacks would be a bit smaller on there. Take it off, just a little clip of the buckle, and that comes free. And you can also do that on the back of the uh, backpack, but then you're using these loops here. The Daylight series have special buckles that clip into these loops, two on the top and then two down here on the bottom and your daylight knapsack will clip into these loops. I can do the same thing with my nebula just by using this uh, strap system. Put the buckle through there, and then clip it together. Now it's attached to the back. Same thing on this side. And there you go. So the big backpack and the small one hanging from the back or hanging from the front. So it's a very modular system. Taking it off, pretty simple. Just unclip it, feed the buckle back through, unclip it, and there you go. So that's accessory number two. You can put a um, daylight pack on the front, here, or on the back. One more accessory I'd like to uh, talk about is the Osprey water bladder system. And that's what also makes this a bit of a hiking, trekking, um, mountaineering even backpack. You'll notice here it says H2O on this little tab and this is an opening, a little hole here that goes to the inside of the backpack and inside the backpack there is a special pocket where you can put in a bag of water with a, a hose and then a valve that you can drink from. 
Um, I've never used one of these in my whole life. I know they're very popular in knapsacks these days um, for real outdoors types, so they don't have to stop and get out a bottle of water and drink. They have water available to them all the time in this hose that comes out, and they can just drink from the hose anytime they want. And I'll show you the uh, mounting system on the inside of the bag for that uh, water bag, that bla water bladder system. So you just open up the uh, front of the bag. Get this out of the way for now. And right here at the back, I don't know how clearly you can see that, but there is a, a bag here which the uh, water bladder fits into. I'll take a look at it with the GoPro and uh, give you a uh, closer look. So here it is here, the pocket for the water bag. You unclip the top buckle and then the bag slides in here, hangs from this hook takes most of the weight of the water on this hook and some of the weight in the bag itself. Then you clip it back up to hold it tightly in place. And then you take the water hose and feed it through this hole, which comes out to the front of the bag here, right there. And this pocket has double duty. If you don't um, bring a water bag, you can put in your notebook computer. So it's good for a tablet or a laptop computer. Fits uh, nicely in there. It isn't padded at all. Like this is just material, it isn't padded. So if you want to put your computer in there, which is pretty handy to be able to do that, you probably want it inside a you know padded case like this. Though you don't have to, you know, you could slide your computer in there all by itself and it takes up a, yeah, a lot less room. So this is a double duty, either a water bag or laptop uh, case, which again is part of the uh, travel series feature for this uh, backpack. Well, that is it for accessories. You've got the air cover, you've got the water bag, and the ability to clip on a day pack to either the back or the uh, front. So now I'd like to talk about what, this, what makes this a travel backpack. The first feature to me that makes it a travel backpack is the general shape of it. It's a little bit boxy, you know, more boxy than a mountaineering backpack would be. It has kind of a rectangular shape kind of flat and squat rather than narrow and tall and that kind of makes it uh, suitable for carrying you know a lot of objects that you go uh, traveling with it's also a little bit lighter than your standard you know mountaineering or a hiking backpack the suspension system is a full suspension system but it's a little bit thinner a little bit lighter than what you'd find on a true dedicated hiking bag and the bag, the straps will pack down a little bit flatter to make it a smaller profile for when you put it inside the air cover. A real hiking backpack might have big, thick, cushy, you know, waist belt, thicker and softer than this one, perhaps. On the front flap, you have a zippered compartment for the whole front flap here. It's quite large. And that's very handy for uh, traveling. And of course, the whole front of the bag opens like a suitcase. So if you want to, you can unzip the whole bag itself and the whole thing opens like that. So you can get at all of the uh, contents of your bag. But if you want to organize a little bit, which, which I would recommend, they have an optional divider here inside the bag, which divides the main compartment into two. 
like a lower compartment, which is kind of meant for a sleeping bag and that kind of thing, and then an upper compartment for uh, everything else. You can also use that to separate dirty items, wet, dirty shoes, for example, from your dry clothes up at the top. And I'll show you how that works. So here is the full backpack opened all the way up. And this is the uh, divider on the bottom. And one interesting thing to note is that it has a secret pocket underneath. So you can put documents or important things here and it's kind of hidden, which is really kind of nice. The way this uh, divider works, it has three toggles here and there are loops on here that they feed into. One on the left, just slide it in there, lock it into place. One in the middle and one on the other side. So now you basically have two compartments. You have a big upper compartment. This is where the uh, water bag would go and your laptop and that kind of thing. And then there's a divider. And then at the bottom, there is a separate compartment, which you can access through the lower zipper. And it has that uh, hidden pocket down there. So now you've got two compartments, one here and then one up there at the top. I hope that uh, makes sense. For me, I think I would always have this divider in place. You know, why not? It gives you ways to organize your gear, which I find uh, quite handy. The main zipper at the top, by the way, also has an ability to put in a little lock right here. They're heavy duty zippers and you can feed a little luggage lock uh, through there. Just a couple other items that make it a good uh, travel backpack. Here at the top, there is a zippered compartment. It's quite large actually. And you can put all kinds of smaller items in here. If you move the air cover to a different location, that would give you two pockets on the front. There's a little hidden hook inside here where you can hang keys or flashlight or anything else on that little hook. I like little design uh, touches like that, so that's, uh, that's very handy. And you have a carrying handle on the top and another padded carrying handle on the side, so it makes it easy to carry around as a uh, suitcase. And on the waist belt itself, there is a little pocket on each side, so you can put little items in here. Um, your wallet and things like that that you might need as you're going through the airport or through the train station. And if you're hiking, yeah, you can put little snacks in here, I guess. They're not really that big. I think of this more as a utility pocket for money, keys, you know, things like that, a wallet, very small items that you need during the day as you're walking around. This backpack has another very interesting feature on the inside, which makes it uh, handy for traveling. There is a webbed compression wings that allow you to put in, for example, clothing and then cinch them up tight just to save on a volume. Um, I'll show you how that works. Works really well with my uh, packing cube for my clothes. So just unzip the top portion. Now that we have the divider in place, you would only zip it down halfway and that opens up here. And these are the compression wings that I was talking about. There's one on each side, opens up, and this one has another secret pocket on the inside. You could put valuable items in there or just store small items. So you fold those out to the side, take your packing cube with all your clothes, lay it down flat, fold these flaps over and you have some very nice buckles clip into place and now you can tighten that down as much as you want. And there you go.
you go. So and that holds all of your uh, clothing in place. I kind of like that. Uh, I like that feature quite a bit. Just to give this backpack a bit more shape as I talk about some of the outside features, I'm going to load in some of my gear just to uh, fill it up and, uh, and see how it feels with a bit of a load in it. I just quickly loaded it up with a whole bunch of stuff and you can see it has a much more of a shape now you can kind of see how it looks kind of more like a boxy rectangular shape has a curved uh, back here and now that it has some items in it I can show you a few features on the outside that perhaps make it more of a hiking or a trekking backpack or it's also they're also good for uh, traveling as well I just want to take a look at the features on uh, the outside. So these are the loops that I mentioned that your day pack can attach to on the back. And of course, you can use these loops for anything, you know, anything outside the, that you want to attach to the bag. You can use these loops. But there's also a set of uh, two compression straps across the top that's what these are here and they're also pulled in two directions so you clip those together pull it tight has these edges that cover up the zipper for some uh, water proof and there you go pull these down tight and you can compress that on the across the front and it also has compression straps on the side one on the top at each side one there and one there and finally on the sides it also has these very large uh, pockets has an opening on the top of each one and an opening on the side so whatever gear you put in there you can access it from uh, both directions which is kind of handy because when you're wearing the backpack and you need to reach behind you you can reach through here or through there so these would be good for a water bottles if you wanted to do that here's a large 1.5 liter water bottle you can see it was right in there still with lots of room to spare so it's quite a large pocket and there is a and there's one of these big pockets on each side. So you could even carry three liters of water in these uh, pockets if you wanted to. One bottle there. And one bottle there. Okay. One more feature that I'd like to mention before I come to the end of this backpack overview is that down at the bottom, it has a set of removable straps that you can use to attach, you know, anything you want. Another bag here at the bottom, be it a sleeping bag or a tent or anything like that. Um, I'll, I'll show you how that works. So this is a fairly uh, typical compression bag for a sleeping bag. And if you don't have enough room in your pack or you want to keep it on the outside, you just put it here. Take this strap, click it into place. Take the second strap, click that into place and tighten it down. So there you have it with a uh, sleeping bag or a tent attached to the uh, outside. So I think that is about it. Believe it or not, this bag has other features that I haven't even talked about yet, but I'm going to uh, cut it off there 
and uh, I have to get ready for my flight tomorrow. But uh, now I'm going to sit down and figure out what I'm going to pack in this bag and which of these items I'm going to put in my uh, carry-on uh, day pack. And uh, then it's time to go to sleep and get ready to head to the uh, airport. So that's it for my packing video and my quick backpack uh, tutorial or overview of the uh, Farpoint Trek 75. And I'll see you in the next video.